Well, but the, but the most unusual thing has to do with the red chip. Now, what is the red chip? There's a, the, the quasars, when you look at them, uh, they're light, and you spread them out uh, into the various spectra, you'll see lines in the spectra. Some of these lines are bright lines, some of them are uh, dark lines. The bright lines represent uh, emitting sources, and the, the dark, li uh, dark lines re uh, represent uh, absorption sources. And they're a characteristic of the various elements that can be found in the, uh, uh, in the object. The unusual thing about quasars was that the spectrum was unlike any other spectrum observed. And back in the 1960s, nobody really understood what was really going on with the quasars. How, what are those strange looking lines in their spectra? And suddenly Martin Schmidt came up with the brilliant idea that these lines were really the ordinary lines, but they had been shifted. And they had been shifted very, very large amounts to the red end of the spectrum, the longer wavelength end of the, end of the spectrum. This shift of uh, uh, spectral lines uh, was enormous. They were shifted by as much as a factor of three. So wavelengths in the order of uh, 1,000 angstroms would be shifted uh, to 3,000 angstroms. And uh, if you were to apply a Doppler effect, a normal non-relativistic Doppler effect interpretation to that shift, that would mean these things would have to be going three times the speed of light. So you couldn't even do that. You had to apply relativity to understand what was going on. And even then, they had to be traveling 90% the speed of light. This application of of uh, these very large red shifts to uh, Hubble's law would indicate that not only are they traveling very fast away from us, but they are also uh, traveling, uh, uh, they're also at very large distances. And these uh, distances make them by far the most distant object ever observed because they have the largest red shift ever observed. If they follow Hubble's law, they have to be the most distant object. And so this makes quasars extremely difficult to explain because for them to be at these enormously large distances and yet to appear as bright as a normal star, they have to be intrinsically very, very bright. As bright as uh, several galaxies full of stars, each galaxy of which could contain as many as several billion stars. So here's an object giving off as much light as several billions of our suns and yet uh, is, is uh, uh, a single object, and because of the variability of it, it varies in the order of 10% in a matter of a few weeks or maybe even a few hours, it uh, uh, has to be a very small object. In fact, it can't be much larger than, the, uh, uh, than our solar system, or probably not even much larger than a star. So here's an object giving off more energy at, uh, than several galaxies full of stars, and yet concentrated in the size of a star. Extremely uh, impossible to explain from ordinary physics how this can occur. Well, it's becoming more and more obvious that the problem with quasars can be easily solved if they aren't at these enormous distances that Hubble's law would indicate, but instead we're nearby. So, in other words, if they were as close as a regular star, there's no problem with the energy source associated with them. What, what the problem is, is how do you explain the red shift? And there's been a compilation of evidence that's begun to show up that would indicate that quasars uh, may be close by objects, maybe not nearly as far as a redshift would indicate. There's also several other objects that are beginning to show discrepancies in their, in their redshifts. And uh, uh, Halton C. Arp at uh, uh, Mount Palomar in, uh, in California has compiled a whole series of, of uh, discrepant redshifts. And this has caused this great red shift controversy to, uh, to uh, become one of the most active controversies in, uh, in today's astrophysics. The uh, best experts on uh, quasars are the Burbages, uh, Margaret and Jeffrey Burbage. Uh, and they have written a book on quasars. And in uh, all of their publications, they have come to the conclusion that they believe that quasars have what is called a, an intrinsic redshift. In other words, their redshift does not indicate their distance. It's not associated with the cosmology. And they could very well be much closer than, uh, the, uh, uh, than they would uh, be if you interpret Hubble's law for them. Well, so that means that really 
the problem that ought to be being attacked by astrophysicists is not how do you get all this energy out of such a small spot, but instead how do you uh, 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 how do you explain the red shift? Now, oh, there's one other thing about quasars that I forgot to mention, and that is that uh, some of the quasars have uh, uh, two components to them. Uh, let me go to the blackboard, and I'll show you what I mean. Uh, a, a, a quasar is observed generally in the uh, optical as just a dot, but in the radio it oftentimes has associated with it uh, lines of uh, constant uh, radio intensity so that it looks like kind of like a donut associated with it and has uh, sort of two bright spots, one on either side. Sometimes quasars have jets shooting out of them, and at the end of the jet you'll find a, a radio um, source. Well, the, one of the very interesting things about some of these jets associated with this is that these things are separating angularly. So if you look at them uh, from, uh, from the Earth, you'll see that there's an angular separation, and you look at them a little bit later, and that angle has increased. So that if the quasars are very, very distant objects, then the uh, increase in actual travel that they would be under, undergoing, these two radio components, would have to be on the order of 10 times the speed of light. Whereas if they were nearby, they wouldn't have traveled nearly as far, and they can be explained better. So there's been a, a paper uh, summary of all the observations that was published in the Astronomical Society of the Pacific. Uh, this is the April, May, 1980, and, uh, and in this uh, article, uh, uh, John, uh, uh, Alan Marsher and John Scott uh, made a summary of all the observations that have been made and all the attempts to explain how these components could be separating at these high angles and, by, uh, and try to explain it by some way other than uh, the idea that uh, they're traveling at very high velocities and none of the explanations really work. The only explanation that is really satisfactory is that quasars are not as far away as the red shift would indicate, but are much nearer objects. And then you can, then it becomes much more reasonable for these angular separations to be uh, due to uh, uh, velocities that are less than the speed of light and, and easier to handle with today's physics. So the problem is, what causes the red shift of the quasars? And the solution that uh, uh, I have come up with, and some other authors have also suggested, uh, including Grote Reber, is the idea that the redshift of quasars could be due to the uh, Compton effect rather than the Doppler effect. And uh, the Compton effect is an effect that occurs when uh, light bounces off of electrons and it loses energy to the electrons. And in the process, the electrons increase in energy. This is causes them to to radiate in the, in the radio wavelengths and causes the quasars to be uh, bright objects. So all that really is required for the Compton effect to produce the red shift of quasars is for quasars to have a big cloud of electrons around them. In other words, they could look something like, like this. Now, this isn't an egg. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is my uh, attempt at showing you uh, schematically what the quasar would look like. And uh, here we see a uh, representation of a large cloud of electrons, or a large corona, if you might have it, of electrons around a central star. And so that uh, what, what uh, would happen in this case is that the, the star uh, would have the light coming from it uh, going through the large cloud of electrons before it reaches you, uh, your, your observations. And it, in uh, that occurrence where then the, uh, the light loses energy to the electrons and comes and is shifted to the longer wavelengths and that uh, uh, causes the very large red shift. Now, a very unusual thing that also sometimes is seen in quasars is the fact that sometimes the emission lines, the bright lines, have a larger red shift than the absorption lines. And that is very difficult to explain from a Doppler effect interpretation of the red shift.